of the civil disorder in Los Angeles, a new public radio program was created at KCRW called Which Way LA, hosted by Warren Olney. You are looking out through Los Angeles now, now it does look like a war zone. Now I'm at uh, Beverly and Mariposa, exactly. Where there's a fire burning the heck out of a small cafe. Again, we're on the corner of Western and Venice. Those sounds and those commentaries are bringing back recollections for all of us of what we were watching and listening to here in Los Angeles just a little over six weeks ago. Good afternoon, I'm Warren Alney, and this is Which Way L.A.? Tom Bradley's been mayor of Los Angeles for 20 years. Today we'll talk with the mayor himself, with several other guests, and we'll take your questions by phone. What do you think are the principal differences in the city between 1973 and 1993? The skyline is the most visible change, uh, but the the number of, of activities, housing, developments, uh, clinics, uh, the transportation system, all of these are, are standout kinds of things that, that we've seen happen in the past 20 years. Uh, what do you hope for the future of Los Angeles? What are the principal lessons, do you think, of your administration? I think it will take us a couple of years to recover from this recession. Uh, The rapidly growing immigration rate here could be a source of great tension and conflict. Uh, Where they are legal immigrants, we have got to acknowledge that this is a city built upon uh, the the contributions of immigrants, and it's going to take great leadership uh, to address that matter. Mm Mm-hmm. Very interesting article by uh, Mark Fabiani, the uh, deputy mayor, who is, of course, leading office today also in the uh, L.A. Times recently. And he mentioned three people as uh, possible successors to Tom Bradley, people who could uh, help to bring back the coalition. I think it's very interesting the people he mentioned. He mentioned Mark Ridley Thomas of the city council, uh, not surprising at all. Mm -hmm. He also mentioned Maria Elena Durazzo, who is uh, a a union leader here Mm -hmm. in and Zev Yaroslavsky, mm-hmm. the longtime uh, councilman. How do they... Ladies and gentlemen, the host of Which Way L.A., Warren Olney. Mark Fabiani thought ought to be mayor of Los Angeles, sitting here at this table due to the genius of the Pat Brown Institute. Uh, uh, it, wasn't, it was a, something, something of an accident, as I understand it, that they had chosen these people as well as uh, two others who have been so important in the kinds of changes that we've seen uh, in the film today. And can I just say, what a great film. Could we give another hand to that extraordinary document? It really takes you back, and I have to say that uh, I was, uh, uh, the first big story I covered in Los Angeles was the election of Tom Bradley in 1973, and if you think he wasn't concerned about diversity and didn't recognize, even at that time, just how diverse Los Angeles really is, uh, consider this. We have here on the table a major portion of the rainbow, but Tom Bradley knew that the city of Los Angeles was a lot more complicated and diverse than that. And when he announced his staff appointments, and there were a lot of them, I don't think there were any leftovers from the Yorty administration and the Bradley administration, (laughs) big list of names, and every one of them was there, not only in terms of the name and the background and the qualifications for the position that they were taking, but also in terms of religion and ethnicity and nation of origin. And one of the ones that uh, just stood out for me, leaped out at the time, was Anton Kalia who was named as an Episcopalian from Malta. (laughs) I don't know how many Maltese Episcopalians there are in Los Angeles, but they had a representative in City Hall, and Tom Bradley wanted them to know it. (laughs) And Anton Kalia, who I believe is here tonight, served all 20 years of the uh, Bradley administration. Let's give him a hand. I want to thank President Kovina and Rafe Sonenshan as well. This film, of course, has made Rafe a movie star, and and, uh, (laughs) uh, he'll never get over it. (laughs) It's a real privilege for me to have this uh, panel here. Next to me, uh, Lorraine Bradley, 
the eldest daughter of Tom Bradley. 35 years in the Los, in the Los Angeles uh, Unified School District, teacher, coach, assistant principal, president of the Human Relations Commission, board of the Tom Bradley Legacy Foundation at UCLA, chair of the Tom and Ethel Bradley Foundation. Uh, we have also Xavier Oslowski, elected to the LA City Council in 1975. Served uh, in, on the uh, Board of, of Supervisors from 1974 until he was termed out last year. We have with us Mark Ridley Thomas, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. <laughs> After serving in that position, he joined the LA City Council in 1991. He was in the State Assembly and the State Senate, and he's been a, board of, a member of the Board of Supervisors since 2008. Maria Elena Dorazzo is with us. She is the former Executive Secretary of the LA County Federation of Labor. She is now Vice President of Immigration and Diversity at Unite Here. And finally, Judy Chu is with us. Three times the mayor of Monterey Park as a member of the City Council. She's been in the State Assembly. She was a member of the Board of Equalization. Uh, in 2009, she became the first Chinese-American electus to the, co to the Congress of the United States, and she is chair of the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus. So we have a lot to talk about and a lot of people who can uh, really, I think, uh, be very enlightening about the Tom Bradley years and uh, what has happened since and what is happening right now. Uh, before we start, uh, uh, or I, I should say I want to go first uh, to the person who knew Tom Bradley best and who knew the private side of the man that we all knew as such an extraordinary public figure. What is it that you would like people to remember most about that man who was your father? Oh, he was a great father. Uh, I can't uh, give any more better accolades than that. Uh, I think uh, when we're children and we uh, see our parents, and, and many of us have some problems with parents, but in our family that wasn't the case. And, uh, we admired my father. My mother was, was fantastic because obviously she had to hold down the fort. But uh, the thing I can say most is he was a great father. What we see most and what we heard most in the film are Mayor Bradley making uh, public statements of one kind or another. But then at the very end in the credits, they showed some pictures of him acting up. You know, look, putting on masks, uh, playing games. Did he have a sense of humor? Oh, absolutely. He loved a good joke. Uh, laughed a lot. Um, we had a lot of family events out in the backyard uh, in the early days. Had barbecues with the family, uh, but he was always there. If you had a good joke to tell him, he was always there to listen to you. Uh, he had a great sense of humor. Uh, you didn't always see that because he was the mayor, and uh, he took that job quite seriously, and he felt that that public persona needed to stay where it was, but when you got to meet and greet him, which many of you here in this audience did, you understood and knew what Tom Bradley was about. You like to go shopping. <laughs> Absolutely, for himself, people would just be so shocked. He'd be in Sears or one of the other department stores buying uh, clothing for himself or whatever. He did his own shopping. Uh, he was a regular person, and they'd see him in the store and go, that the mayor? Is that really the mayor? I, no, it can't be the mayor. And then he'd come up to him, shake their hands, and, and introduce himself, and they'd just be flabbergasted because they couldn't believe the mayor shopped for himself. But that's the kind of person he was. We heard him say he was a fiscal conservative. Did he go to the sales? Uh, no, he <laughs> sent me to those. <laughs> Sevier Oslowski, uh, you joined the LA City Council in 1975, uh, three years or two years after the mayor uh, was elected. Uh, tell us a little bit, if you will, uh, about those early days, and particularly what we saw today uh, as the black Jewish coalition that was so important to getting him elected? Well, uh, I ran for the city council in 1975 against the Bradley machine. Uh, I was uh, not expected to win. Uh, I was the first person who didn't expect myself to win. Um, and uh, when I was elected and sworn in, uh, Tom Bradley spoke at my swearing in, and he said, uh, Zev, welcome to the establishment. <laughs> uh, or you are now part of the establishment, were the exact words. And uh, I, when I spoke, I said, I'm, I may be part of the establishment, but the establishment's not a part of me. And I spent a couple of years trying to prove that to Tom. Uh, but we got over the election pretty, pretty quickly. I will say uh, that uh, 
of all the political figures, certainly at that level that I've worked with, and I've certainly had my differences with him on specific issues, but taken his tenure in, it, in its totality uh, as, a, as a person, as a man of his word, uh, as a person who was willing to stand up to interests of all kinds, uh, I don't think there's anyone who comes close to that uh, to that level of excellence uh, as a human being as, as Tom was. I, I didn't know him as a, as a person, as a family member. Uh, certainly, we all knew him in a political sense. Uh, I had to deal with him, or have to. I enjoyed working with him time after time on budgets, on labor contracts, on the Olympic Games, uh, which now the more things change, the more they stay the same, if you've heard the news today. Uh, Tom, Tom was tough and uh, was willing, uh, you know, once he gave you his word that he was going to take a position, he stuck to it, no matter what happened, no matter what kind of pressures were brought to bear on him, something that, uh, that I uh, don't find, I think any of us find in too many politicians these days. I want to say a word about sense of humor. Um, after he lost the governor's race in November of 1982, uh, Tom invited me and Dave Cunningham, I don't know if Dave is here, uh, to go with him on a trip to uh, Hong Kong and China. And uh, Tom was just a zombie. Uh, he was just brokenhearted by that loss, as so many people, uh, so many of us were. And he hadn't really cracked a smile the whole trip. And we go from Hong Kong to uh, Guangzhou, it's about a 20 minute flight. We land in Guangzhou and it's raining, and there's one guy comes up with an umbrella to hold over Tom's uh, head as we're walking down the steps of the airplane, and there's one television camera uh, in Guangzhou waiting to, to greet him you know, after he'd been, you know, hundreds of television cameras during the campaign. And I leaned over to Tom and I whispered in his ear and I said, Tom, just remember that in China, if 100, people know your, 100 million people know your name, if 10% of the people that know your name, that means 100 people know who you are. And it was the first time he cracked, cracked a smile. Uh, and then jokes flew uh, the, rest of the, uh, the rest of the trip. Uh, he was a great mayor. Uh, and despite the fact that this is focused as appropriately it is in, in the racial context, uh, that opening line where he says, uh, I don't want to be a black mayor, I don't want to be a white mayor, I want to be a good mayor. Uh, that's the way he carried himself day in and day out. Uh, it was issues that drove him uh, more than anything else and common sense and what was right. And oftentimes he did things that were politically very difficult uh, for a mayor to do and, and he did it and he stuck to it. Let me get back to uh, coalition politics in a moment. Uh, first, uh, here's Mark Ridley Thomas uh, who joined the Los Angeles City Council in 1991, just before uh, the cataclysm of 1992. How best do you remember Tom Bradley as you were growing up, becoming a, a politician, and uh, preparing to enter into that world? Well, uh, Warren, I think the first thing that I would say that um, I, prob I probably would not be uh, sitting in this seat uh, right now if it were not for Tom Bradley. Uh, by the time I uh, arrived at the uh, City Hall Chambers, I was acutely aware of the fact that I won uh, scarcely by uh, 500 votes. Uh, Tom Bradley uh, endorsed my candidacy um, in the a runoff and um, uh, said to me, if you make it through the primary, I'll stand up with you. And I have no doubt about it that it was his bearing, his um, uh, big heartedness, his uh, tough mindedness that uh, uh, was um, strategically helpful uh, to me. And it was simply uh, the same uh, behavior, frankly, when I was at the Southern Christian Leadership Conference when I first uh, got to know him. Um, Marnes T. Tackett uh, was the executive director and they had a wonderful relationship and I benefited uh, from that uh, relationship as well. And so um, uh, the activism of the, of the moment uh, uh, caused uh, us to take positions contrary to that of 
uh, then the sitting mayor, Tom Bradley, when I was doing the work of civil rights at uh, SCLC. Uh, but he never made uh, that an issue. And so by the time I did arrive at City Hall, he embraced me. Uh, and I had the honor of being uh, um, one of his primary lieutenants um, for the uh, uh, two years remaining at that point in time. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. He was affirmative uh, of um, uh, me, obviously of a different uh, generation. And I guess the last thing uh, that I will say is his work ethic uh, was second to none. Uh, he got to City Hall before um, practically everybody else, and he left after they did, uh, and in many instances, after uh, he had already uh, run the gamut of the events for uh, the evening. He was an, indeed remarkable and an extraordinary example of what leadership uh, in the modern era looks like, and I salute him to this very day. Congresswoman Chu, uh, tell us, if you will, uh, how important Tom Bradley was to the inclusion of Asian Americans in public life, civic life in Los Angeles. Well, I am just totally inspired by this film and by Tom Bradley's story. Um, I knew that he had experienced obstacles, but I didn't see them uh, so clearly until this film and to see what he had to overcome to get into this position is just incredible that that uh, in that terribly racist campaign by Sam Yorty uh, Did not stop him. He 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 went for another round and and then became mayor and, and stayed there for 20 years uh, reshaping Los Angeles into such an important and vital center of this whole nation and the one thing that I'll be certainly grateful to him for is that he opened up City Hall. Mm -hmm. I mean, City Hall was predominantly white before he came, but he made it a place where people of color could be. And uh, for Asian Americans, he hired many Asian American staff. He appointed Asian Americans to the commissions. For instance, George Takei was on the uh, Southern California Rapid Transit Board for 11 years. Rose Ochi was on the Police Commission. They were, they were all throughout the different commissions. And Asian Americans finally had a voice. And let me just tell you, for me personally, um, when I first ran, uh, I ran in a seat where uh, Asians were not the majority. I mean, I had to build a coalition. But what Tom Bradley showed me is that a person where there was an 18% black population could win in this city and do it by reaching out to all kinds of people in that city, and he could create bonds with them where they could trust and believe in him. So he inspired me, definitely, uh, to run and, and to say that it could be done. Maria Elena Dorazzo, uh, you're the only. <laughs> you're the only one of Mark Fabiani's uh, predicted uh, possible next mayors who hasn't been an elected uh, official, but you've certainly been an important factor She's smart. Uh, in <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out, you never know. <laughs> so uh, tell us, if you will, your experience with uh, Tom Bradley and, and uh, how he was important to Latinos in Los Angeles as they, of course, became such a, a, the now uh, most numerous uh, 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 ethnic group in the city. Well, my... Um how I got to know Mayor Bradley was actually through the labor work, um, through the labor movement. Um, Bill Robertson was Secretary Treasurer of the Los Angeles Federation of Labor. Um, and when I got elected um, through my own struggle with the Hotel and Restaurant Workers Union at Local 11, um, uh, Bill Robertson is the one who introduced uh, me. And I was nobody, I was a much younger uh, person leading this local who still had not become stronger, uh, was very behind in what it should have been doing as a union. Uh, but Bill Robertson, I think with Mayor Bradley, um, decided that here was an opportunity 
uh, to um, help um, a Latina, but a labor leader. And, uh, and so he asked me to be, uh, serve on the airport commission. Well, at that time, uh, to serve on the airport commission as it is today was a very, very high honor um, and an extraordinary uh, position to hold. Um, but Mayor Bradley was always thinking ahead. Um, and I think that the combination of me being from labor, but also representing a, a growing workforce uh, that was very um, diverse, from African Americans to Latinos to Asians, he really saw that. Um, and I um, was very proud to be on this airport commission with Mayor Bradley. And I'll just tell a quick story. We, um, he was so proud of showcasing Los Angeles and making sure the world knew how Los Angeles was changing, what a great city, what a great international city it was. But it was about the time when there was starting to be a question as to whether or not commissioners should be taking trips um, uh, uh, you know, to other cities and to other countries. Um, and I remember going down, I was with him uh, uh, at City Hall and this whole big group of cameras and reporters were really pushing him. Are you going on this trip? And what gives you the right to go on this trip? And you shouldn't be going on this trip and using tax dollars. And he was so tall and he was just stood way up here looking down at the, <laughs> at the reporters. And uh, he just had this very dignified way of saying, I'm doing what's important for the city of Los Angeles. Um, and I was running alongside him, um, not really knowing what was going on. So I got the tail end sort of, of Mayor Bradley's work to build Los Angeles. He was very committed uh, to the labor movement, to unionized jobs. He knew that represented a real opportunity for working class folks to be able to support their families. And he really cared about families and uh, a good standard of living. So. Um, again, I, I, I I'm, I'm really feel lucky mm -hmm. to have had that experience with the mayor, and um, and it meant a lot to my own growth, my personal development, um, that someone like Mayor Bradley would look to put me uh, on on a commission that was so highly important uh, to the city. Did you and the other airport commissioners? Check out the expenses of that trip to China that he took with Zevier Oslovsky. Was that part of your job? <laughs> Let me tell you. No you, comment. You don't remember anymore. No I, comment. I saved that trip a lot of money because most every banquet had roast suckling pig. <laughs> talk, talk about the black Jewish coalition. 